Tom here from Lawrence Systems and PF Sense version 2.4.5 P1 has been released. It's a point release and there's just a lot of errata and bug updates and I figure we'll talk about a few of them. And I know other people kind of wait because this was uh, released on June 9th and here we are on June 15th. And yes, I've been pushing these updates to clients and pushing them to many systems. And so far it's gone really smooth. I haven't had any problems at all. Of course, follow the proper update procedures when doing this, update the system before you update any packages. But there are a couple things I want to talk about specifically related to security and really good reasons you should update this. Uh, before we dive into those details, let's first. If you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, including a link to our Patreon if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter. We also have a swag store where you can get shirts and other items that are for sale, and that changes from time to time what's available and what's not, so go ahead and check that out frequently. And finally, our forums. If you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about this video, suggestions for new videos, or just reach out, say hi, and talk tech, our forums are a great place for that. All right, now back to the content. So here's the NetGate blog post related to all the updates. And here's the security errata updates. And we'll talk about the basics. Address the issue with large PF tables causing system instability and high CPU usage during filter reload events on some multi-CPU performance uh, platforms. So Hyper-V Proxmox. And I know I had seen a few people talking about this where they had said their virtualized install of PFSense was having a lot of trouble. Specifically, I think I've seen more people talking about it in Hyper-V, but maybe not as many people run it inside of Proxmox. We generally install with our clients um, almost 100% of the time bare metal, and it's how we run it here. So I didn't really see this issue, but uh, they did fix it for those of you that were experiencing this issue or maybe have PFSense in your lab set up like this. Uh, fixed an issue with SSH guard, which could prevent protecting against brute force logins, some workarounds that were uh, SSH guard. We're going to dive deeper into the unbound. That's the other ones. The other stuff is all kind of a lot of little notable bug fixes and little issues, including for people that experienced this when the internet went out, essentially, when there was lost connectivity on WAN, the slow page reloads on the status pages, uh, that's been fixed as well on that dashboard page. So that was definitely an annoying thing if you had experienced it where uh, the internet would go out and it would take a long time to load. But let's dive into very specifically, well, we'll cover this one real quick if you didn't know, the IP firewall invalid mbuff handling. This was a, a free BSD problem, not a zero day, but it was a way that certain uh, packets could cause some problems and eventually cause it to, uh, I believe it was a memory exhaustion right here. Incomplete packet data validation may result in accessing out of bounds memory. So CBN there. So they fixed this. Uh, this was a fundamental FreeBSD problem. So really anything based on FreeBSD that's using this could potentially a problem. Um, access to out of bounds MBUF data can lead to a kernel panic or other unpredictable results. So you don't really want unpredictable results. There's not any that I'm aware of known problems out in the wild. It takes a very specific type of packet to get to this to create this issue. Uh, so that has been addressed and updated. Now the big thing is this right here. This is one that um, was an interesting piece of research called the NXNS attack. And like so many good pieces of research, it has its own website. Didn't get a logo though. I wish it would have sprung for the logo, but it's an interesting DNS amplification attack. And how you may be affected by this and why it's important it gets updated is interesting. So it doesn't require someone to be on your network. It requires that someone creates a domain with a really unique set of records, DNS records. So when Unbound tries to resolve that domain, it kind of gets stuck in a loop. So it's an interesting double amplification attack. So instead of just getting the DNS records like a normal process, someone has to create this domain with malformed records in its DNS. So they need the domain, they need DNS, they need you to click on it. Uh, this can create kind of a problem. Now, it just starts basically an amplification, so it may run out of resources, may cause the crash, but it also requires a lot of people, for example, to click on a domain. So one click is probably not gonna do it. It would probably take a bit more, but you kind of get the idea that there's an issue here. Uh, it, it's also one of those things that it would probably get filtered out relatively quick using any type of DNS filtering uh, if you're using an upstream provider that does such things. So finding these and attacking it, and it's more of a nuisance, but anything that starts as a nuisance that can crash an internal process eventually can lead to being a uh, much deeper problem in terms of, you know, maybe there's a potential way they could find something that would crash and then 
execute something. Right now, that is not the point. This was uh, put together by security researchers, not something found out in the wild being actively exploited because there is no exploiter payload at the moment. But hey, it all starts with finding the flaw and finding a way to amplify it. And this has been out a little while, so uh, this has now been patched and uh, they were you know, diving to, well, the research was done a little while ago, they're diving into all the details around it. Now, this was kind of cool too, because uh, driver support for Intel Wireless, I talked about using Wi-Fi on PFSense, and now they're adding uh, some more. So it's good to see that that is being actively maintained and actively updated uh, for those of you that would like to run wireless on there. Like I said, I have a video on that topic. It's kind of a neat one. It's something a little bit different. Now, the last little thing I'll talk about is like the SG-1100. Uh, people have asked me about running Sericata or Snort on those, and I don't think they're all that powerful, but they do have some bug fixes that kind of address issues with that running on there. So that is on the uh, list here is the themes that are fixed. But to me, those are not the best devices for them. I've always told people, you know, the, the most base device running that is, I mean, it's capable of, but it's not a great idea. At least start with an SG3100 or higher if you want to run Sericata or Snort on there. Um, because, you know, processor power matters quite a bit. But that's it for the updates. We've been pushing them out to clients. It didn't have any problems. So I did it over the weekend. And uh, I'm here in the studio and not on site repairing something that didn't boot. So, uh, so far they've all gone well. Uh, knock on wood, table, plastic, whatever this is. Because uh, it is important that we get these patches out there. I do recommend this update. I don't see any reason not to do it. And I've always been puzzled, especially with the uh, people who just kind of, you know, never update their firewalls. It's probably a good idea. Eventually there might be some bug in there so egregious that uh, you're too many versions behind it would be hard to update. So do stay up with it, do keep it up to date. It's relatively important. Waiting a couple days uh, because you're nervous about it, that's fine. As always, follow the procedures, do a backup first. It's really not that hard to reload PFSense. It's actually pretty easy if it does crash. Um, make sure you have the drive ready and you can reload it if you need to. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.